My whole idea, my whole concept for driving, literally driving around and encompassing the entire lake is to get different perspectives, different views of businesses, just different people around the lake in general and getting their idea, their perspectives and really just stopping in at random. Hey Bob, how you doing? Good, Tony. How are you? Good. Thanks for meeting with me. You betcha. Appreciate it. Well, right now I'm I'm real positive and encouraged by the uh, 2013 and 14 class. Uh, um, this early ice this year, we're seeing uh, customers go out on the mud, and uh, a lot of these smaller fish are being caught from 12 to 16 inch um, inches, and that's very very encouraging. I mean, in some cases, that's all they're catching. They make a few moves and, and of course they're getting into some 20s and 21s and, and bigger fish, but uh, that's very encouraging to see. As we turn south on 169 and head towards Garrison, I can't help but notice all the iconic images, things that have really shaped the way people fish on Mille Lacs Lake, the way things are done, business is done. Tuts, for example, the Tuts map that came out really changed not only the way we fish on Mille Lacs Lake, but how we look at modern day mapping. It was really one of the first realistic GPS maps out there, especially for this body of water. I don't know, you, you talk to old timers and stuff about, you know, fishing prior to the map, you know, I mean, there, there just weren't many people that could do it, you know, they, they, there was, it, was, it was a very special few and, you know, I, I think launch business maybe back then was probably bigger, you know, because those guys knew it, you know, they were out there, they could fish those areas where, you know, the regular anglers couldn't, you know, and yeah. it, it has changed the whole thing, the whole game of fishing on the lands. Primarily, I would say this shop was 85% walleye, you know, 10 years ago, you know, 15 years ago, and, and, and you could, you know, make a living on that. You know, now, if I was 85% walleye, I wouldn't be here anymore. You know, my business would be gone. As we pass the frozen walleye, it's great to see a few fish houses in the background. With the closure taking place on August 3rd, it's nice to see business get back to normal with this delayed start to the season. Overall, you know, the business changed a little bit with the advent of the wheelhouses, so you, you have a little bit less rental um, business, but you've got some road passes. But uh, so because I do a lot of rentals, you know, that has had some effect, but, but it's still been a good business. The key word that's been around is diversification. Well, not everybody can diversify. And, and to try to bring this area back without the walleye is not going to be a good game plan in the long term. It'd be like trying to bring the Black Hills back if the Mount Rushmore fell off the mountain. What we see today has been a big shift from uh, that permanent house, or that skid house we like to call them, into uh, wheelhouse uh, and portables, portables being the flip over styles, and into wheelhouses where they can actually follow the bite. So if I know it's a stretch, but if for some reason Mille Lacs isn't the hot bite, they can take that wheelhouse, hook it behind their truck, and they can haul it to the next best bite, whether that's on Leech, Winnie, Gull Lake maybe. We see a lot of folks head up toward Red Lake and even as far as Lake of the Woods. So the day of, of our captive market of people coming here, staying for the weekend or staying for the winter, uh, this has all changed now to where we get a lot of day trippers. We get a lot of folks that um, will come and visit Mille Lacs one or two weekends a winter and they take the rest of their recreational time and um, spend it in other areas, enjoying other areas of the state. Yeah, we've had to, um, you know, market different species of fish, the northern, the bass, um, let out our little hidden secret that we've got a world-class bass fishery. We've got to tell everybody that. And, um, you know, and we're using different avenues. Of course, social media is really big, so we're trying to spread the word about, you know, those different things there as well. I think the technology um, has really stepped up the game, you know, more. It used to be before where, you know, you came to the lake and you didn't have all of it. Maybe one out of ten caught fish. Now it's nine out of ten are catching fish. I think that's really changed the smartphones. I have people walk in my office all the time and throw their phone at me and say, here, where do I go? You know, so I think that's changed the dynamics of fishing all the way around. Um, of course, the boats are bigger and better and the electronics are bigger and better, so that's all changed through the years and, awesome. you know, that's just changed fishing all around, everywhere.
and it's not just the boats and motors. I mean, it's the beginnings of the Loran, the GPS, the graphs, the side view, the bottom view. I mean, it's just, it opened up opportunities for anglers of little or no knowledge, except for with the equipment they were running, to figure out a lake. There's more to a lake than a muskie. There's more to a lake than a bass. There's more to a lake than a walleye. It has to be an ecology that works. And the more we seem to be managing stuff, the more we're messing it up. Hey, Kevin. Hey. Thanks for meeting with me. You bet. Anytime. Anytime. You know, again, you can't go drive by Mille Lacs Lake without seeing that McCoy's name. That's one of the legendary names on Mille Lacs Lake. And of course, Kevin McCoy is not only an accomplished angler on this lake and a guide on this lake, he's a legendary tournament angler. He's fished a lot of different locations. Uh, he knows a lot about not only walleye fishing, but just fishing in general. Mm -hmm. You know, Kevin, I'm doing this presentation for the round table meeting. Um, I'm getting perspectives all around the lake. We've mm -hmm. really started on the north end and worked our way all around the lake. You know, what are some of the changes you've seen, either historically or just from a fisheries perspective or an angler's perspective, mm -hmm. uh, that you could share with us? You know, there's there, there's been a lot of things, Phil. I've I've had the resort here for just about 23 years now, so what I've seen from the resort end of it, we're just getting ready to put all the fish houses on the lake. <clears throat> We've gone from you know a lot of eight by ten, eight by sixteen size houses, you know, 23 years ago, to right now, I don't think I have five in my whole resort of of 200 houses. Um, everything's gotten bigger, 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 bigger. So that's that. That's definitely been a big change for me. You know that, especially in this region, a lot of the lakes are just changing. It's so with the invasive species, um, a lot of them are getting cleaned up. So it's you know for for us, <clears throat> bass just exploded. You know really in the last eight years or so. But as far as the walleyes go, <clears throat> um, you know I fish Lake Erie, I fish Leech Lake, I fish Lake of the Woods. Um, some of the different river systems down in Mississippi, <clears throat> you know, all of them have their, their challenges, all of them have different times when they're doing a lot better than others. It's, it's not a straight line, you're gonna go out and catch a limit of walleyes in, in any one of those systems. Um, they, they have their highs and their lows and, and uh, you just kind of flow with it and, and, uh, and, and deal with them. All right, Kevin, I really appreciate, uh, you've had a lot of great insight, I appreciate you meeting with us. I know you're busy. I'll let you get back to pulling houses out in the lake. Thank you very much. Sounds great. Thanks, Tony. I do want to swing in and talk to George Nitty. George has been in business for over 20 years. George did something last summer after the walleye closure that I thought was unique and a, and a great idea. If you went out on his launches, released smallmouth bass, uh, he'd give you two packaged commercial walleye fillets and then in turn, you know, his customers came in, had a fish fry, uh, came into his bar restaurant a lot of times. I think the concerns for me are, is, are the bait fish. Uh, we have a creek that runs through our property. Uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, shiners are in there and you know they're being taken out before they have a chance to get back into the lake um, you know being in the food business everybody needs to eat i believe fish need to eat and you know the years that we don't have uh bait fish you know the bite is is fantastic the years that we do have bait fish the bite is lower so on on that note you know we need we need to take care of those bait fish Upon arrival back on the northeast corner of the lake, uh, I first of all wanted to thank all the small business owners for participating in this video. And then I also wanted to showcase the fact that uh, the people around Mille Lacs Lake are just as diverse as the ecology in Mille Lacs Lake. And so getting a sampling and an idea of their thoughts and perspectives, I thought added a lot of value to this video and hopefully uh, you feel the same way.